In this video, I'm gonna go over the rules of placement chests and then show you how it was possible to use them to break pikes. This is the starting position, as you can see the pawns are placed in the 2nd and 7th rank, while all the pieces are in the middle of the player's pockets. The game starts with the placement phase, where both players alternate placing their pieces on the back rank, so for example white can start by dropping the king to e1, black can respond with knight on f8, white can continue with rook to h1, black can go knight to a8, the players alternate placing their pieces, and once all pieces are placed, we place normal chess. There are two additional rules. First, you have to place your bishop on squares of opposite color. So let's say white starts by dropping the bishop here, while black does something. Now if I try to place the other bishop, as you can see, only light squares are highlighted. Let's say black goes here, white goes here. Now if black were to place anything but a bishop here, they wouldn't be able to get their bishop on opposite colors. So okay, let white makes a move. If I try to drop a bishop, I can drop it wherever I want. But if I pick anything else, as you can see, it's not allowed to drop it on h8. The other extra rule is castling. Castling is only possible if the king is placed on its default starting square e1 or e8, and the rook is either on h1, h8, or a1, a8, and it works the same way as it does in normal chess. I'm going to show you the FVNs so you can see how it changes if I place the pieces. Let's say we place the king on e1, black goes rook h8, White goes rook a1, you can see the capital Q in the FEN, which means white and castle queenside. Black is the other rook. White drops the rook on h1. Again, you see uppercase K, which means white and castle kingside. If black drops the king here, we get both KQ, which means black and castle both ways. And once we're done with the placement phase and get all the pieces out of the way, both sides can castle. So how can such an innocent looking variant completely break the site? The elephant in the room is one of those special rules. I said something like, you have to place your bishop on squares of opposite color. But what happens if you create front position challenge where white has three bishops at the start? In this position white has nine pieces in hand which is also problematic but that's not the main issue. If I take away one of the knights things are still gonna go nuts. As you can see if I try to drop a knight, a rook, a queen or a king? I can't. Why? If I were to drop, for example, a rook here, can I get all my bishops on the board? Do I have a free light dark square? I do, so I can place one bishop here. Do I have a free dark square? Yes, I do, so I can place two bishops. But I have three bishops in hand, I can't place them all, so this move is illegal, and so is any other non bishop drop. However, if I try to drop a bishop, the only thing the engine is gonna check for. If I drop the bishop on a dark square, do I already have a dark square bishop? If I don't, and in this case I don't, this means this drop is legal. Let's say black plays some move, I can drop another bishop, black drops another rook, and here's another interesting moment. When I saw this position for the first time, my thought was, okay, I can't drop a bishop, I can't drop any other piece, I still have pieces in pocket so I can't move anything already on the board, so this position is a stalemate, right? Wrong. It turns out, if I have no legal drop moves, the engine assumes the placement phase is over, and I can move something already on the board. Black doesn't have the same issue, so they just keep placing their pieces on the back rank. White keeps moving through their pieces on the board. White gives a check. Can Black do something about it, or they have to place another piece? Fortunately, the engine realizes that Black is in check, and instead of dropping a piece, Black can either take the bishop hit like this, move the king away, or take with the queen. Okay, so what can white play now? For example, drop the queen here. Why? White already has a dark squared bishop. They don't have a light squared bishop, so they can place one bishop on the light square. And they have one bishop in pocket, so if they drop a queen here, they can get all their bishops on the board, so this is legal. Black also has to complete the placement phase. White can also drop a bishop. Black drops their last piece. White continues the placement phase. Now black can take this pawn. And even though this looks protected, it actually isn't because white still has to drop their pieces. Black can leave the queen hanging, and again white cannot take it. Black takes a free rook. Now white has one piece in hand left, the king, and only those two squares. If white were to drop the king here, it would be in check. So is it legal to drop the king here? It is. Why? The piece of code responsible for rejecting moves resulting in their king being in check does something like this. It looks for the king in the position before the move was played. So in this, and if it doesn't find it, assumes no matter what we play, 
we won't end up in track, which is totally wrong if the piece we're dropping is the king. So we got this position and it's made in one for black. Feel free to pause the video and try to find it. The solution is not queen takes c1, if black were to play it the game would go on, but since white no longer has the king black has no way to checkmate, and even if black were to capture all of white's pieces, white would have no legal moves and would not be in check so this would be a stalemate. The only way black could win is white either resigns or runs out of time. You might think well if there is no sequence of legal moves resulting in white being checkmated, then if white flags then this should be a draw, and you should be right. But of course the engine was never designed to recognize one side doesn't have mating material because their opponent no longer has the king. But let's get back to the puzzle. The solution is to play either queen takes e1 or rook d8 and both those moves are just checkmate. So after I pointed this issue out, the creator of Ferris Stockfish Ian Fab, also known as UB Deep, decided to make two changes to the engine. First, if you have some number of bishops, you need to place them as evenly as possible between light and dark squares. So if you have an even number, then the number of between the light and the dark square must be equal. And if you have an odd, one of them is exactly one more than the other. Let's have a look at this position. White has three bishops, so they need to place at least one and at most two on the light square. And at least one and at most two on the dark square. While black has four bishops, so they need to get exactly two on light squares and exactly two on dark squares. So for example, white starts by occupying one dark square and so does black. White occupies the second dark square. Black occupies another dark square. Now white is allowed to place one more piece on dark square because they need to have only one dark square bishop. But black needs two dark square bishops so they can't place anything but a bishop on the dark square. Now if white tries to drop a rook or a king, all squares but a1 are allowed. Why? a1 is the last dark square and black needs to have one dark square bishop so the only piece allowed to go on a1 is the bishop. Let's go back to the starting position. If white starts by dropping their bishop, they're allowed to place one bishop on light square a second bishop on the light square, but now if you try to the third bishop, it has to go to a dark square, because again, we can't have two dark square bishops. And the same thing goes for black, again, you can't place a bishop on a dark square. The second change is that before a king drop, the engine checks if this king would be in check, and if it would be, the drop is illegal. And if this results in player having no legal drop moves, they can instead move a piece they already have on the board. So for example, in this position, if white goes queen takes d7, Black has only one piece left in the pocket, the king, and only one square left, but of course they cannot drop it here because it will be under attack. Even though if black were to drop the king here, white cannot take it, white still has to get one more piece, but it doesn't matter, this drop is still illegal, so black can move something already on the board. Why don't we take the queen? Well, because white still has to place something, and we might as well take it now. So do those fixes get rid of all the weird cases that could occur in a game? It depends. If you give a position where both sides have 8 pieces, then no, just they're gonna place all the pieces first and then gonna start a real game. But if you don't, things can really go weird. I'm gonna show you an example, this is a game I played against Fairy Stockfish level 8. As you can see, I have all the 8 pieces, but white has extra 6 knights for a total of 14 pieces, and turns out in this position white is completely lost. Why? Let's see how the game goes. Also a side note, black, white already has two pieces on dark square, so they were to place a third one. They are not allowed to place a fourth one on dark square because they have a need for a light square bishop. Effectively this means you have to place both bishops in the placement phase, even though they have 14 pieces. At least with an even number of bishops, if white had three bishops, they would still have to place one on the light square, one on dark square, but will be allowed to keep the third one in the pocket in the other placement phase. Anyway, let's go back to the game. Okay, so now I'm done with the placement phase, but my opponent has 6 pieces, so they move anything away from the back rank. On the next move they will have to place it and then will not be able to recapture something. So for the first few moves, Stockfish was just pushing its pawns. But here for whatever reason decided not to, probably because it's a weaker version and sometimes makes randomly a weaker move. Let's see engine analysis, Stockfish completely doesn't understand, and now it says it's plus 8 because, well, why sub a ton of material? It probably does realize I can take this piece, but now why still is up a lot of material? The eval is swinging a little bit. It's probably still gonna stay high. But after our next move, I can take the rook. Now I just slowly realizes it's doom. It is still up a lot of material, but 
they're about to lose a lot of pieces, whatever they move, this gives me one tempo to capture something. So let's say they decide to move this piece, now I decide, can just take, but also I have a mate in 3, I can go queen f3, and the knight cannot be taken, white still has to place a piece, I go here attacking this pawn, white can drop a knight to defend, but knight takes g3 is checkmate. But in the game I didn't see it, I was too focused on just humiliating Stalker by taking all of his pieces while I can't do anything. So I took the knight, then took the queen, then took another knight, then took another knight, and another. And here, white has placed their final piece, so if I were to take the rook, now they finally can recapture. But I didn't fall for this, I took this bishop, I took another pawn, another pawn. In this position, black up a queen and the rook. And even though I later blundered a fork, and later blundered another fork, this was still a pretty easy conversion. Let's have a look at another example of how weird it can get if one side's in the placement phase while the other's in the game phase. In this position I gave white 3 pieces at the start and I gave black 8, so let's see how the game goes. Okay, so for the first 3 moves both sides were just dropping pieces, now white has no more pieces to drop so they can move something they have already have on the board, black still has to drop, white gets a check. So as you can see black cannot move any of the rooks, the pawns, they cannot drop anything, because they have to get out of check, so the only 2 legal moves would be king here or king here. Black gives another check, black defends, another check, black runs away, another check. I have a puzzle for you here. How many legal moves does black have? Feel free to pause the video and once you have an idea, leave your answer in the comments. First person to get it right gets free diamond membership for a year. I'm just kidding, of course, we don't have any diamond membership. Just like on Leeches, all features are free and available to all the users. But you can still leave your answer in the comments. Anyways, the correct answer is one. Why? Well first, black definitely needs to get out of check, so they would have five ways to capture the queen, to move the king away, or to drop one of three pieces here to block the check. So is it legal to drop a bishop here? Well, when we're dropping a bishop on a dark square, the only thing we care about is if we already have a dark square bishop. We don't, so it is legal. Okay, is it okay to place a rook or a queen? If we were to do so, we'd be left with two dark squares, we can't get opposite color bishop to dark swords left, so those tombs are illegal. This leaves us with bishop drops to f8, rook takes queen, or king g7. And now since we have a drop move, all non-drop move becomes illegal, so the only illegal move is bishop drops to f8. Now let's say white moves to h3. Again, we have two dark squares, so we can't drop a bishop. And if we were to drop a rook or a queen, this would mean we also can get the opposite color bishop, so we have no legal drop moves, we can play something else, for example we can take the queen. Now with a free light square it comes back again, we have, we have legal drop moves, we can either drop a bishop here, or if we try dropping a rook, we can drop it in those other square than c8 to allow the opposite color bishops. Let's say go queen to h8, rook to d8, bishop c8. Now with the placement phase is over, we play normal chess, and this is checkmate. The reason I'm showing you these positions is not only their fun brain teasers, but also show how unplayable it gets if you choose a bad starting position. To avoid all this mess, it's best to give both sides the same number of pieces and no more than 8. If you slightly deviate from it like it's 7 vs 8 or 8 vs 9, it's still probably going to be okay, as one side will get one move while opponent still has pieces in hand so won't be able to capture anything, but as you saw, 3 vs 8 or 8 vs 14 is just ridiculous. That's all I have for you today, if you made it this far thank you very much for watching and if you want to see more videos like this don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye!